Welcome back to the Elevate Everyday Podcast, and welcome back my co-host, my trusty co-host, uh, Coach Herb. Um, he's back on the podcast, so glad to have you back, my man. It's been a couple of weeks since we did our last good one, so back. yeah, <laughs> awesome. be back. Awesome. So yeah, so this one's going to be guys all about because Herb has a, a background more in bodybuilding. You know, I've dabbled in a little bit, but he's like actually stepped on stage a few times, helped others step on stage and has actually even helped bodybuilders turn pro. Um, so we're going to talk about bodybuilding, the pros and cons. I'm going to talk more on kind of my experience with powerlifting, the pros and the cons, and then we're going to wrap it up with how can you use these different experiences and, and training styles into your routine if you're just looking to, to lose fat and build muscle and kind of just get in shape overall. So to dive into it first, Herb, uh, I don't know why, but let's let's start with the cons. <laughs> but with, with bodybuilding, what do you think maybe some of the cons are with, with bodybuilding? Uh, first couple cons are uh, a lot of misconceptions about bodybuilding, thinking you just, you know, you hit the gym one hour a week and, or one hour a day, you lift the weights, you're going to grow. Um, I, I think a lot of people have misconceptions about what it takes, the commitment it takes. Um, so one of the cons is, you know, when you when you start bodybuilding, it takes up so much time if you're going to do it right, lifestyle wise, that you really don't have hobbies. This is your hobby, um, and it, it's it's a lifestyle. And we talk about this with our clients. It's not a sport. It's not a distraction. It's a lifestyle. Yeah. I mean, you get up in the morning, you're thinking about what you're doing, and you go to bed at night, you're thinking about what you did and what you got to do the next day. So, um, I, I think it, it takes a lot more to be successful um, than a lot of people think. Yeah. That's probably the biggest con. Yeah, yeah. So the time commitment. Yeah. If you're wanting to be like a serious, like competitor and actually step on stage, even yeah. if you have, you know, ambitions of being pro at, you know, obviously, but yeah, the time commitment can be quite a bit. So yeah, I yeah. can see that. What, yeah. what what else do you think maybe just cons wise from, well, from it, your experience? For, to, to, so you see the guys that go on stage. Now I've been on stage three times, guys, I do not have the genetics to be a bodybuilder. Yeah. Okay. I compete. Um, and I am a bodybuilder, but I'm not a guy that's going to be on the Olympia stage in any, any stretch of the imagination. So I think a lot of people get a misconception that, you know, boom, boom, I'm going to look like Arnold. I'm going to look like Phil Heath. I'm going to look like Mr. Olympia. It doesn't work that way. Um, so I, I think a lot of people, you know, get into it, the intentions, and then, you know, we'll, we'll talk about this because, uh, one of the cons is when people aren't getting where they want to get, we have such a fast food mentality. I want it now. Um, that's when they turn to the drugs. And, um, unfortunately if one works, 10 is going to work better. Right. Coach. Um, so, um, like anything else, I think if you were just to pick up a chainsaw and I have seen it on TV, I know how it works. You're going to cut your leg off. You need to yeah. learn proper technique, proper form, what it's for. Um, so I think a lot of people don't reach out to people like you and I and get a coach to cut out all those problems mm -hmm. and stuff, because, you're talking about your body doing a lot of work. You can injure yourself um, and it could be permanent. So again, yeah. it's, it's, you're lifting steel, metal. So it should tell you a little bit. You might want to pay attention. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I agree with you. I think, you know, the way it's portrayed like bodybuilding and just kind of the, the sport and what you see in the media around it, it's like, it's just really exacerbating like the, the best of the best, obviously. I mean, that's what people want to see, but it's like taking it to the extreme. And yeah, it, I think it gives people a false expectations for one, mm -hmm. you know, maybe if they don't have those genetics, what they can achieve realistically. And then also like, you can't really look at those people and see what they do and, and implement that for yourself, especially if you're just getting started. So I, I kind of right. see where you're getting with that, with like the the experience level and, and, you know, just getting into it. It's like, you need to build that foundation for for one, like you said, before you even think about PEDs and stuff like that, like you, you want to build a foundation and it's like, you know, don't just think that drugs is going to get you there. Cause, cause those people that take PEDs and step on stage, like I, I guarantee you, they, they were far beyond the average person. And like, you know, at a very high level before they even decided to, to take it to that next step. Yeah. So exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So again, people don't understand bodybuilding. They think lifting weights in the gym. Right. They're not thinking about prepping their food, yep. eating every three hours on the hour, taking your supplements, getting the right amount of sleep, doing your cardio. When everybody else is going out to play, you're going through the procedures you need to do to quote unquote, be a bodybuilder. Yep. Um, and, and, and again, I think it's the, the things that I like about it 
um, offset a lot of the cons, but the, the probably the biggest con is lack of education. And, and that's with anything we do in life. You know, people right. think saw it on TV. I could do this. Right. You know? Yeah. So it, it, everybody can do it till they have to do it. Yeah. And I agree with you when I, when I think of like when I've trained bodybuilding wise, it's almost like in those seasons where I've been more bodybuilding focused, I, I think of what has to be done outside of the gym more so than what's being yep. done inside the gym. Like, it's almost like the gym part is easy. <laughs> it's like yeah. everything else that goes into it, the food and the, yeah. the recovery and everything. So I completely agree on that side of yeah. things. Um, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So bodybuilding wise, and again, we're, we're going to get into the powerlifting, but the bodybuilding side, I would say is 10 times more food focused. Yeah. So your results are going to come from the food you're eating, i.e. powerlifting. The results come from the weight you move. Right. Um, so we're being judged on how we look as a bodybuilder. Powerlifting, you're being judged on your performance. Yeah. Um, two, two different things, two things that go coalesce with each other. Um, but again, if you were to see these people train, you would have, a, I think, a lot more respect for what they go through. Right. Um, average bodybuilder that's a novice competes on the national level like myself, probably spends six hours a day on bodybuilding, somehow concepts, right. training, um, prepping your food, getting your cardio, sleep. I mean, it, it takes some time. It's not going to happen accidentally. Yeah, 100%. So yeah, so what are some of the some of your favorite kind of pros or just from your experience, what do you think people would really benefit from, from trying bodybuilding or just what are some of your overall pros? For, for, for me, it was an instant control. I was the skinny kid growing up, you know, six foot, 140 in ninth grade. Four years later, I graduated six foot, 145. <laughs> so, you know, I do a martial arts and stuff, but when you can lift weights and change your body and go from a skinny kid to a above average kid to, a you know, a, a carry it through for, you know, 30, 40 years as an adult, there's a lot of self-esteem tied to that. Yeah. Um, good, bad, or indifferent, you start to realize hey, I can actually take charge of myself and I can be bigger, smaller, stronger, faster. Um, and it's addicting, you know, it, in, in a good way, you know, because yeah. you set these set these examples and you go for it and you get there. Um, so it's one of those things that you, you do, you're you successful, it's your fault. If you if you fail, it's your fault. Um, yeah. So it's, it, it's one of those things that for me, I felt better about myself. It complemented my martial arts. I didn't do it for martial arts. Um, I was doing martial arts for a living. So the bodybuilding became my hobby, but it, it was like, okay, I'm in control, you know? And then people will look at you and say, wow, that guy's got a nice chest. Look at his arms. You know, um, I remember one of the first times and I don't wear tank tops a lot, like some people, um, <laughs> but I was in Costco and I was leaning on the cart and the lady said, are those real? And I thought she was talking about the blueberries I had. And she goes, no, your arms. And I'm like, yeah, those are my arms, you know? So, you know, it, it, you, you get that little ego boost and stuff like that. But I, again, I think that you're, you're healthier, you're stronger, you understand your body more. Um, it, it, and it just, I think it carries through every facet of life. You know, I started this one fooling around when you're 16, 17 and your early twenties. And then when you get serious, you know, and you carry it for another 30 years, it's pretty, pretty, pretty enlightening. Yeah. <clears throat> I completely agree. And I, it's, it's kind of funny. I, in ninth grade, I was, 511 120 pounds <laughs> i was even even smaller than you so we kind of had a yeah. similar i think reasons of why we got into it but, but yeah i completely agree like just taking control like figuring out that i have control over like the way i can make my body look it's super empowering right and it's a, it makes it so that like you said once you do that you take control you you like take, take control of a transformation physically like that you're like what else what else can i can take control of in my life so right i see that all the time yeah yeah, yeah. and as a Coming from a, a business owner standpoint, if if you're interviewing with me for a job and I see that you're a novice bodybuilder, you hit the gym four or five days a week and you're doing all that, I know you have discipline. I know you know how to break things down and, and, and be successful. And I know that you fall off the wagon, you're going to get back up. So to me, I look at that and say personality is a good match for someone that's going to be successful. You're not going to hit the gym and be successful and fail at everything else in life. It doesn't happen that way. Right. Yeah, I see so many parallels between um like your your physical fitness goals and your career goals. Like it's like so many things that you can learn through the process of your own fitness journey, you can transfer over to your career, especially since, you know, coming from our, our experience of owning businesses, like I see almost a direct correlation and a lot of the same like traits it takes to do that. So I completely agree with you there. 
Um, what what other pros besides some of that can you think um, of? I, so again, when I say health, there's a fine line. Um, so what I mean by health is you're eating good. You're not eating refined foods. You're keeping your sugars low. You're doing your cardiovascular conditioning. You're working on your heart, not only the the, the biceps and the big muscles. You're working on your heart. You're working on your head. So that's all great. <clears throat> when you go to the next level and the PEDs come into play, <clears throat> excuse me, and you're <clears throat> you're taking the diet to the extreme, then the health isn't so much there. But you're aware of that, and you know once you get done off stage, boom, you're back on. You're getting your body fat back up to a acceptable percentage. Um, but I, again, I think it's you're in control. You make decisions in your life, and these decisions we make as bodybuilders show. Yeah. Right. I mean, we all know guys that look. You know, they take they got they got their shirt off and they look really good, and then all of a sudden you see their legs, and you're like, dude, you been in the car accident or something? What happened, man? So. <laughs> To me, you're not a bodybuilder unless you have legs, right? Yeah. You, you you don't wear the long shorts to hide them and look at my chest, look at my arms. So yeah. that bodybuilding is a total, total body transformation. You know, almost like Arnold said in Pumping Iron, you look in the mirror, you need a little more on your shoulders, you do shoulders. You need a little more on your legs, you do legs. So, yeah. you know, you've got to be, you got to be a critical thinker and you got to be somebody that's just, again, if you want to do it, you can't take no for an answer. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think some of what you're saying too with like, uh, like working on all the different, it almost takes like self-awareness and just like really reflecting on the, like your physique and just like, also like what areas am I lacking in that's causing me to, you know, fall off with this. But a lot of times, mm -hmm. like if, if you're lacking in some of those areas, there's carryover into other aspects of your life too, right? It's like, dang, my sleep is terrible. So it's causing me to, to like not perform my best bodybuilding wise, but I guarantee like if, if you figure that out, like there's other reasons why you should get sleep as well that it's affecting. So, so I, I completely agree. It's like almost like yeah. holistic. So, yeah. You know, and again, for the bodybuilding part of it, you win or lose in the gym, not on the stage. It's very subjective. Who looks better, who looks leaner, who looks more full, you know, you're going to be objective in the top three to be probably placed anywhere in that group. So um, it's very subjective versus like powerlifting. You lift it, you lift it, you get credit for it, bro. It's all, it's yeah. all on you, yeah. you know, but what I like about it is, you know, I, you and I are uniquely different as far as that goes, but we have a team behind us that helps us. It's right. not an individual journey. It's a team. And I don't mean just spotting. I mean, like, you know, there'll be days like, you know, I went through some stuff with my wife's health and I wasn't working out and I wasn't training. And my guys are like, get your fat ass up and go into the gym, man. Yeah. She's not going anywhere. She's sleeping up. Get your butt moving. So the community keeps you focused and keeps you on the uh, on the path. So, again, you, you'll see it in my talk tomorrow. I have a, a meme that I think is one of my favorites. It says surround yourself with like minded people. Right. So it doesn't make any sense if you're a bodybuilder and you're going to go, hey, guys, let's go to McDonald's and grab some McNuggets. It's like, no, that's not what we do. Let's go get some yeah. sushi. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, again, when you surround yourself with like minded people, like you said, it takes and goes to the next level. Right. Yeah. So, you know, I injured myself in Hawaii, one, one of my fights and stuff. And I just I got into the pity party and I didn't want to do anything. And because of the people I was around, they wouldn't let me do that. They, we're going to the gym. We're going to eat. We're going to do this. And I'm like, let's go get some donuts. No, we don't do that. Yeah. So it's a lifestyle and it's a lifestyle that I can say, save my ass a couple of times. Yeah. Yeah. That, that is very true. And it's like, you know, I will say last year, <clears throat> um, and I'm, I'm on this, this streak of, or like the, you know, I haven't broken this where I, I haven't drinking any alcohol in like a year and a half now. And I used to drink, you know, a decent amount quite a bit. Um, and I think a lot of that was from last year, I decided to get really strict, like bodybuilding wise and um, bulk up and then lean out and like, just kind of try to create my, my best physique I could last year. And it was like, I was, there's no room for alcohol in this process. And so I, I think, like you said, like it, it puts you in an environment, um, and surrounds you with people, especially if you're like part of a team, which I did have a coach and there was a community, all that type of stuff. And it's just like, yeah, you're just, you're just surrounded with people and ideas and in an environment where there's no room for, for stuff that's going to get you into trouble or, or stuff that's like not in line with, with like your health and, and moving you in the, in the right direction. So I completely exactly. agree with you. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah, so I'm going to transition kind of into the, the powerlifting side of things and talk, talk some on, on my experience with some of this stuff. So I would say some of the cons we'll start there with powerlifting is, I mean, for one, you know, if you're not doing it right, 
and you you know if you're just trying to ego lift and, and just you know if you don't have perfect form on everything like it is very easy to get hurt right like it's it's a serious sport where like you're you're trying to maximize how much you can lift and you know i go into every single leg day and i literally have anxiety now towards the end coming into my competition in about a month it's like every time i go in on leg day it's like I, i'm anxious and kind of nervous because like i'm putting 450 pounds on my back or I'm pulling, you know, almost 600 pounds off the ground. It's like, if you, if you're not like locked in and doing everything right and, and doing it with the right form, like it is very easy to get hurt if you're not doing yep. that. So, so I would say just the injury aspect, just making sure like you're doing things right, that, that can be a con, right. It, it can be dangerous. Um, so that's one thing, but also if you, if you're doing everything, you're controlling all the variables, you know, I would say there's other sports that, uh, that it's, you know, there's things that aren't even in your control, right? That, that I think like football, basketball, like something can just happen. Someone can run into your leg. Right. So I feel like it's almost more in your control to, to stay safe if you're doing the right things on the flip side That's of it. it. <clears throat> but, um, but yeah, so then the other thing I was going to bring up is like CNS fatigue, just your central nervous system, like same thing. Like when you're, when you're lifting 450 pounds on your back, pulling 600 pounds off the ground, like <laughs> if I've got like a, a client call after doing that, like sometimes I'm just dead. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Like there's just no energy there. It's like, I just, I just had 600 pounds in my, in my hands. Like <laughs> yeah. I'm exhausted. So like, I have noticed that that's, that's one thing. Like it takes quite a bit. And a lot of times on these leg days right now, I'm leaving like three hour windows in my day so that I can just like on either end, like have a little bit of re recovery time and just, <laughs> you know, prepare before have that intense lift and then have some recovery afterwards. Yeah. Cause, cause it does take a, a decent amount out of you. So just be prepared for that. Um, if you're getting yeah. super heavy with things. Well, it, and I, I agree. So the similarities in bodybuilding and powerlifting is you yeah. don't just walk into the gym and start lifting. Mm -hmm. You need to know the day before it's leg day. Yeah. Okay, am I doing blood restriction training? Am I going to have my electric stems on? I better make sure it's charged up. I have a specific pair of shorts I wear. Yeah. You know, it's a mindset. Yeah. Um, and I think that's probably the thing that you and I have via bodybuilding powerlifting is the intense ability for your mind to focus on something that very few people in this world can do. Yeah. Very few people. You know, they look at 600 pounds and just let them try to push it across the floor on a round. It, it, that's a lot of fucking weight, yeah. right? The mindset that you have to have to be like, I'm going to do this, right. right? It may crush me, but I will get back up and do it. Yeah. And when you accomplish that, there's there's no other thing you can compare that to. It yeah. really just is, you know? Yeah, I think that is something like coming into it. If you're really wanting to get serious about like one of these sports, it's like, yeah, just be, be in the mindset that it does take more more from your mind and kind of your your willpower and your mindset like you know not just in that workout sometimes sometimes it's like it's it's going to take a little bit of focus you know like you said before after like just making making the right decisions throughout the day to to support what you are doing in the gym so i agree yep. <clears throat> for sure the other thing i was going to say with powerlifting one of the cons is just it is a lot of the same movements right i mean it's squat bench and deadlift so you're working on those three movements a lot <laughs> So that that's one thing like with bodybuilding, it was like, man, there's a lot of variety. I'm doing a lot of different stuff. And obviously yeah. there's still supporting movements and accessory movements that you're doing to, to work on the, the muscles more isolated and stuff like that. But just be prepared. Like if you're wanting to get serious about powerlifting, like it is the squat bench and deadlift quite a bit. So right. <laughs> that's right. one thing there. Yeah. Um, and then the last kind of con, and I'll get into some of the pros, but um, it can be, you know, we already kind of touched on it, but it, it can be quite time consuming, you know, on those leg days, like I said, like I'm sometimes leaving three hours out of my day, um, for like that whole process of warming up, getting that, working up to that heavy lift, um, you know, stretching and everything afterwards. And it's just like, you know, it, it can be time consuming if you're getting super serious about it and you, you do want to take a good amount of rest in between like really heavy lifts as well. So it, it takes a little bit longer in the gym. So, um, yeah, those, those are kind of the cons, but let's transition into some of the pros because you're probably like, man, that's <laughs> this sounds terrible <laughs> at this point. But, you know, but some of the pros, I, like you mentioned, it's very objective, right, compared to, to bodybuilding. Like, you know, with bodybuilding, you could do everything in your power and you get up on stage and it's like the, the judge may just – you know, know the other person, I don't know, like there's a lot of different variables, right? It's, it's more subjective, like you said, but with, with powerlifting, it's like, if you lift that weight, you did it right. Yep. And, 
And it's very objective the way you see the progress happening as well. It's like you just see the numbers going up along the way. So I actually really yeah. like that part of it. Um, yeah. Any- I think it's interesting that you, you, a lot of the power lifters I've met and trained with over the years don't look like power lifters. They're not the big guys you see on TV that are deadlifting a thousand pounds. Yeah. They're mom and pop. They're Joe's. They're average people that just want to have the ability to do something nobody else does. Right. right. So there's different levels um, of skill set. Um, but I, I love it because you can you can walk away from the sport for any reason, injuries, family. You come back. It's like, you know, not starting over again. That muscle memory thing is real. Yeah. You know, and people after a workout, like you said, three hours, you're tanked. Right. But I bet you have a shit eating grin on your face after you've accomplished a great leg workout and you're staggering and your legs are shaking as you're trying to sit on the toilet. (laughs) You're like, that was a good day. And people are looking at you like, what do you mean? That was a good day. You look like you're in pain. It's like, yeah, but I did it to myself. (laughs) No. Yeah. A hundred percent what you said. It's like yesterday after, or I guess it was two days ago after my leg day, it was like, once I hit the, the numbers that I need to hit on squat and everything, it's like, there's no feeling like it. So when, you, when you're just putting in the work and you're seeing that objective progress, like the numbers are just going up, I feel like it, it just feels so good. And it kind of goes back to what you were saying with bodybuilding, like feeling like you're in control. It's like, mm-hmm. yeah, if I'm doing the right things in the gym and I'm just kind of controlling these variables, like I get to control the my strength and how things are going up. So I, I really love that aspect of it for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And then one thing, and this is a pro, I would say, you know, the bodybuilding as well, but with with powerlifting it's like you learn a lot about programming and just progressive overload mm-hmm. just like i feel like yeah. you you learn a lot about the process even if you just follow even if you just follow like a cookie cutter program honestly i mean obviously it's going to help a lot more if you have a coach and you got a custom program you got someone kind of like you know troubleshooting things along the way you're going to learn a lot more that way but even if you just follow like a basic program you you'll learn a lot about programming through that process of getting stronger yeah. so yeah i love that part yeah. of it yeah. And then, yeah. And no, for me, for me, for me, I haven't had to really work for 59 years. <laughs> yeah. You know, I've been able to share, share these techniques and share the skill set and share the, you know, the lifestyle with other people at different levels. You know, I mean, I've trained everybody from judges to lawyers to, you know, uh, high level people in the military to mom and pops. Yeah. You know, I've worked with Down syndrome. I mean, everybody can do something in this sport. And it just makes you feel better about yourself overall. And that carries, yeah. that carries into everything else you do in life. Right. Yeah. Um, these guys that are in the gym, whether you're powerlifting or bodybuilding at five o'clock in the morning, are you serious? You don't think there's, you don't think those people are successful in life. Right. Right. Good. You know, so that, again, I look at somebody like that. And if I'm trying to build a quote unquote business or a team of people, I got to count on, I'm looking for people that have a skill set like you and I do, as far as I decided to do this to myself. I'm going to set the time aside. I'm going to forego the pizza and the popcorn and all that stuff. And yeah. and I want something. And, and you know, so it, it's it's something that you, you know, I've known people in this sport for a dozen years. And they're pretty much where they were when they started. They're just not taking it serious, but they're healthier than they would be if they didn't do it. Right. And people that have gone, you've seen it, people have gone to the extreme and they just want to, they want to get that weight up off the ground and they tear a muscle. They want to get that, they want to look good on stage, they tear a quad. So you can get too far into it. And I think that's what we were talking about. It really makes sense to have a coach. Yeah. You know, I mean, I've talked to people that go, well, I saw a YouTube video. Good. You're a three-dimensional character and you watched a one-dimensional educational thing. You're not going to get it right. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) You know, when you, when you can, when you can bench, you know, a good, just even 225, you feel that a couple of times, you know, it's okay, this is real shit. Mm -hmm. Right. So I, I like it. It's a humbling sport. It's an exciting. So some days you'll be humbled and some days you'll be excited. It's just, it's, it's, it's quite the emotional roller coaster. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I all kind of piggyback off of what you were saying. There's just like the parallels into everything that bodybuilding has, um, you know, carry over into the rest of your life. It's, I see the same thing. It's like physical strength alone, you know, can help you a lot with different aspects of your life. Right. Like, mm-hmm you know, feeling like you got, like you're confident to protect your family. Um, you know, just literally picking up things when you're moving and just like, like, you know, just if, even if you have a physical job, obviously that's going to help you. Um, but you know, not only in, in powerlifting, but also bodybuilding, like 
yeah, just, just getting in shape, being healthy. It's like, it's, that's going to have carryover in your confidence. Same thing um, in general. And, and just like you said, with, with getting jobs and your career, like having that confidence and also just the respect from the person that's sitting in front of you. Cause they know mm-hmm. you've got discipline if you look a certain way. Right. So, yep. so I completely agree. Um, yeah. So, but yeah, the, the other thing I, I found with, with powerlifting and it kind of goes a little bit hand in hand with what you were saying just a second ago as well is just like the mental strength that's built through that process, right. It, is, I feel like it's unparalleled and it, you know, the same thing I, I, I found a lot of mental strength that was built through my, my powerlifting. I mean, sorry, my bodybuilding kind of endeavors as well. Um, but it's just like, then I, I noticed like when I have a certain goal and I'm going for it for a long period of time, like when I had, a, I wanted to get to a certain body fat percentage or now that I have this powerlifting meet that I'm um, competing in soon. And I've, I've been training really hard and really focused on that goal for a long period of time. Whenever it's over, it's like, man, it feels like I've got all this, <laughs> <laughs> this mental bandwidth and all this extra time and, and free space in my life. And then like, and then I'm like, okay, well, let me just transfer all that discipline that I've been building and put it into this. And it's like, I always see that I can just kind of transfer that into something else that I'm focused on yeah. after that time period. And, and there's just so much carryover. So, yeah. 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 This is, this, this is something that once you realize you can do it, you'll try anything. You'll try other things. Yeah. You know, it's like, what else could I do if I put my mind to it? You know what I mean? Um, the, the, the one thing that I think, and, and this is a, you know, a generic uh, a comment, but bodybuilders are a little tighter on the food and a little bit, little bit more <laughs> disciplined on uh, making sure that our bodies get the nutrition and stuff we need to look a certain way. I've yeah. noticed power lifters are a little bit more into if it's hold still long enough for me to bite it, I'm going to eat it. <laughs> yeah. But no, that's just me. That, that's that's a pretty true generalization honestly but okay you know i would say for me you know that's that's not me because i'm kind of obviously yeah. a coach and it's my life and everything but yeah. I, I have seen that with power lifters that it's like we'll just eat eat more and just you'll be able to lift more type of thing so yeah, 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 yeah. try not to be that type of power lifter guys because because <laughs> if you want this yeah. to carry over into aesthetics and everything like that too like you need to you need to make sure your nutrition's on point as well so yeah um but yeah that that kind of you know, it's a good transition into just how do you feel like Herb people can implement some of these pros from both of these sports if they just have general goals of general health and just wanting to, you know, lose, lose some body fat, gain some muscle. Like how how can they kind of incorporate this into their own normal routine? Like you said, you know, I mean, you can look good and you can look big. Doesn't mean you're strong. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean you have the ability to take you know, like a, a fall or, you know, a, a bump or something like that. So I think for me personally, and I think you're similar to this, Cade, I'll do power lifting for about three weeks and bodybuilding. If I'm off season, I'll bodybuild for nine weeks. So I'll, get, I'll do a 12 week split, sometimes longer, shorter, but you got to be strong to take the damage. Um, but at the same time, you've got to make sure that, you know, the li- ligaments and the joints are, are, are healthy when you get a little bit older. Yeah. Um, and again, I would say that's one of the cons that I've seen from the powerlifting part is you take a shit load into the joints. Yeah. Uh, the biggest difference, if I was going to explain really short, quick, fast, this is what bodybuilding is. You're lifting weights using no momentum, no leverage, isolating muscles. Body or powerlifting, you're doing the opposite. You're using all the momentum and all the leverage and all the muscle groups you could put together to possibly lift as much weight off the ground as humanly possible. Yeah. Um, so the concepts are different, but I think they go synergy. It's, it's hand in hand. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so, so I, I don't think there's a huge difference. Um, because again, people, you know, again, when I had my gym, I used to tease the, the power lifters cause they'd come in looking like power lifters, you know, mm-hmm. back in the early nineties, we had the, you know, the leotard pants when it's leg day and you'd be wearing zebra stripe pants and squatting next to a bunch of power lifters that are wearing overalls and, you know, kind of teasing each other, but they need a spot on there. If, if I need a spot, they're there. So there's a lot of respect in the gym, uh, no matter if you're, you, you, you know, a power lifter, bodybuilder, a functional trainer, an athlete, um, that was, there's a lot of respect and we're all there to help each other. So the community, I think, is unparalleled, unparalleled. Yeah. yeah. I agree. Yeah. And I, I would say kind of to, to wrap all that up, um, 
you know, I, I agree that it goes hand in hand, you know, strength, strength and hypertrophy. Like you're, you're usually not going to get like crazy hypertrophy without putting on some strength and you're, you're usually not going to get like extremely strong and like, you're going to stay the exact same size, right. Unless you're yep. like purposely trying to, to be honest with you. So, yep. so yeah, I think there's a place for both. I think kind of the, the power building approach is, is what I kind of do for the most part. It's like, and then mm -hmm. when I'm, when I'm getting serious about one or the other, then I lean more towards that. But, but I think for the average person, like kind of a power building approach is, is a really good system, right. Where you're, you're doing enough to get stronger and then you're, you're, but you're focused a little bit more on kind of like the hypertrophy aspect to grow. Um, and then you're just setting your diet up. Like we talked about, cause you know, no matter what you're doing, that's going to be a huge part of your physique goals and, and honestly building muscle and losing fat. So just making sure that you have that dialed in and, and putting all those pieces together, you know, then that that's where I feel like most people are going to get the most benefit. So, right. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I love it because you, I love other sports. Football is one of my favorite. You played football. You can't play football every day. Yeah. You're going to get, I, I, I'm going to fucking just get bored and I'm going to wander off on the sideline. You can lift every day and never do the same lift every day. You can <laughs> do, true. you can, you can do two a day workouts and never yeah. hit the same exercise twice in a year. Yeah. You, you, you should never be bored. If you get bored bodybuilding, power lift. You get bored power lifting, do some strong man. Go up, pick yeah. up a stone and see if carrying that shit around your backyard. Yeah. Right. So you I, I really think this sport has a longevity in it that a lot of sports yeah. don't. Yeah. Um, I'm 59 now. I want to do a show this year. I don't see myself stop training. 79. I'm not gonna do the stuff I'm doing now, but I'm still gonna be going at it. I, there's just no reason to stop. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I love so, that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's like we talked about this when we talked about our step call recently, but um, yeah, it's like when you find something that can be an infinite game, like, I think that's awesome. Right. And I, yeah. I think, you know, th these are things that they can be infinite games. These are things that you can always be working on. So, yep. so that's exciting to me. And it's, yeah. So I a hundred percent agree. Well, cool. Well, any other kind of um, nuggets that you'd like to throw in there before we, before we wrap this up, Herb? Well, you know, what I like nowadays is I see the young kids coming in the gym and the young kids are starting to get addicted and hooked on some of this stuff. And they're not sitting there with their little thumbs playing, you know, hangman or some shit like that. They're actually looking at this as like, Hey, I can do this and help me in sports. I can help this will help me, you know, release stress and anxiety. Um, and, yeah. and I think that is probably how a lot of people get started yeah. is yeah. They'd like to lose weight. They've always wanted to lose weight. They just didn't do anything, but the stress and anxiety you hit a good workout, bro. The endorphins that kick loose, um, the serotonins, all that stuff. I think I read someplace that the amount of quote unquote hormones and endorphins that get kicked loose is about $10,000 street value after a workout. That's crazy. <laughs> you know, you get done. You, yeah, you're exhausted. You can't breathe, but you got that smile and you're like, I did it. And yeah. you got a certain high, yeah. you know, and now if you eat good and you realize you're, you are going to grow and you're just dying to get back in the gym and do it again. Yeah. Right. For sure. So I, I love that. I, I love that. And the fact that you and I can help other people, um, it is just, it, it's, it's phenomenal. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I just wanted to second what you said is like, you, you can never get bored with this stuff if you just continue learning. Right. And so if, if you feel, cause that's, that's feedback I get from a lot of people when I first get on calls, people they are just, I feel like I'm doing the same thing every single time. It's like, okay, well that's when you, you probably should get a coach because yep. you know, if you have a good coach that can keep things interesting, make sure you're continuing to progress long-term, like it'll never get boring for you. So, so that's what we're striving for with our fitness yep. junkies guys. Um, so, you know, join a community, join, be a part of the team. If you're interested in learning more, you know, shoot me a message that says transform over Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, but guys, you know, stay tuned. Me and me and coach Herb are going to be doing, Topics like this every week, jamming on stuff. So we'll see you guys in the next video. And in the meantime, elevate every damn day. Appreciate yeah. you guys. Go do some push-ups. Absolutely. <laughs> elevate. Only obligation is to tell it straight.